Okay, so this is a supplemental masking video. It's also going to go into connecting case history and results and putting it all together a little bit. I've created a case, which is a 10-year-old female who's suffered from multiple ear infections since the age of two. She's had at least three sets of pressure equalization tubes. The most recently was approximately 18 months ago, and they fell out at some point. So six months ago, she developed another ear infection, and in the left ear, it has not responded to antibiotics in that time, and that's what brings her here to see us today. Um, she is cholesteatoma, and her birthday is twenty ten. And life sucks for her. Um, she this is her ten years. This is her birthday, and she's got this going on. So this is our ten year old. So, what are we working with here? Well, we know that we need to look in her ears first. We see that whole um, ear pain and otorrhea and drainage um, as a thing that maybe needs to be addressed. So, we're going to be thinking about conductive hearing losses. And... So the first thing we do is we look in her ear. Now, she's telling us she has pain and drainage in her left ear. So that's obviously not the ear we're going to start with. We're always going to start with the right ear. So we're going to look in her right ear. And what we see is that she has scarring on the right tympanic membrane. And that when we look in her left ear, we see a hole in the eardrum and there's drainage draining, draining out. So what does that tell us we need to do? Well, for some people, that's going to tell them they need to do tympanometry because they want to see is that eardrum moving the way it's supposed to and they want to verify that that's really a perforation. That's a valid rationale that Medicare would accept. Well, Medicare wouldn't be for a child. Ten-year-olds don't have Medicare, but you know what I mean. And then some people would look at that and be like, I see a perf, I see drainage that goes along with perf. I'm not sticking a probe that's going to suck drainage up in that's a waste of time because I know what I'm going to get, which is going to be a tympanogram that has no peak compliance with a large ear canal volume. Neither of those rationales are wrong. Either way, though, what you're going to have to do is consider how that perforation is going to change your test results. So you have to make choices based on what you've seen. So for a perforation, you are required for reasons of acoustics to use headphones. You cannot use inserts because acoustically, the reference values are not going to mash up, mesh up, mesh up, and what you're going to get is abnormally worse air conduction scores in the low pitches. There's a reference for that if you haven't encountered it yet, um, if you need that. So we're going to do testing comprehensive audiometry with headphones. Now, what is the first test you're going to do of comprehensive after you've done admittance if you chose or after you chose to skip admittance? Well, there's two ways to go about this. One is to do SRT first, and the other is to do bone conduction unmasked. Um, neither of them are wrong. They're just different choices. More common is probably to do SRT first, though. So let's say we're doing SRT first. We would test the good ear first. We do test the good ear first. So we test the right ear, and we get a threshold of 5 decibels right here. We have a de threshold of 5 decibels. The left ear, we would start testing, and we would need to probably use some masking. Um, I'm going to delete this so I can show you. Um, so we're here. We test her at, let me undo the tracking. We test her at, start at 50 dB. We give her a word. She gets it correct. We go down 10 dB. We give her a word. She gets it wrong. 
we give her a second word, she also gets it wrong. What do we do? We stay here. Now, the question is, do we need masking at this point? Well, you might just be comparing the left to the right ear and thinking that's 35. Headphones have an IA of 40. We're good. But this is that kind of forward thinking that I was telling you that you need to think about is the other ear you aren't really comparing the left ear to the right ear's air. You're comparing the left ear to the right ear's bone because that is how crossover happens. Crossover happens through the bone conduction pathway, even with an air conduction transducer. So bone scores are very often a little bit better than air. We can just go ahead and assume we're going to need it. So. How much masking noise do we put in? Well, it's not a high level. The non-test ear, we're not thinking it's going to have any big conductive components. So presentation level minus 20, according to Yukulo, is the more common, the most common simplified presentation level. So we set it. We turn the masking noise on. Let me rephrase that. We said it. We tell the patient, you're going to keep repeating those words, but you're going to hear the static noise. Just ignore it and repeat the words. We turn the masking noise on. We want to keep that presentation level minus 20 together. So how do we do that and make it easy? We can track it. That's what that tracking button is for. And so we present the word and some more words. So mushroom, she gets it wrong doormat she gets it wrong eardrum she gets it wrong so we go up 5 db and see how the masking noise stayed with it and we present padlock she gets it wrong we present sunset she gets it right duck pond she gets it right cowboy she gets it right those are our three right so that's her her srt her speech recognition threshold so we hit store and we turn off the masking noise and you can see we've marked what our present what our um, threshold was with the appropriate amount of masking so next we would do tones pure tones and we would do pure tone air and when you are on the astera always go ahead and mark your reliability as good so you don't forget now what frequency are we going to test first in the right ear. We're going to test 1,000 hertz. We're going to test then 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 6,000, 8,000. Check 1,000. Do 500 hertz. There we go. That's, and then two, 250. And it's going, the Astera is going to calculate your PTA. And at while you're doing this 500, after you've done 500, while you're doing 250, you can check and be like, oh, my SRT was five, my PTA is two, that is within, that is in, in good agreement, and so you're, you're okay, right? Now, what is the criteria for determining what is good agreement? Well, people use six, seven, eight, nine, they use different ones. The only good reference though I have is plus or minus six, and that's the Preci and Fowler article. So when you say, when you're picking that, that's how you pick it, and that's the reference that you would use. So we've tested the right ear now, and now we go, we're going to test the left ear. And so we know she has hearing loss, so we're going to start at 50 dB, and she gets it, and 40 dB, and she get, gets it, and 30, and that's a no. And we come up, and 35 is a no, and 40, she gets it. Well, you might finish that out and think, oh, good, I don't need to mask. 40 compared to the right ear is 35 dB. It doesn't exceed the interaural attenuation of headphones. Except, again, where are rational places for bone for the right ear? And that's, you know, 10 dB around it, really. But 10, like, negative 5 would still be a totally rational un unmasked bone score considering this ear. So you would need to mask even though it doesn't look like it here. So in real life, 
I wouldn't complete a whole plateau worksheet. That's just not what you do. What I would do is I would literally turn the masking noise on and then I prefer 15555. So one, one, two, three, masking noise there. And I would present and she gets it. And then I would turn the masking noise up another five and I would pause and I would present and she gets it. So I'd turn the masking noise up again and I would pause and then I would present and she would get it. And I would turn the masking noise up again and I would pause and then I would present and she would get it, at which time I would hit store and there I have a masked air conduction score of 40 dB with 30 dB of 35 dB of masking. Now, how does that fit into the wider area of real masking versus those plateau worksheets versus you know, the formulas. Well, let's take a look at that. So we're at a thousand hertz and our left ear, a thousand hertz threshold unmasked was 40. Right? And our air conduction score in the non-test ear was five. And in real life, you would be do masking that was 15, 5, 5, 5, right? That's, let me, let me switch colors. Maybe that'll help better for like coming back. So um, 15, 5, okay, let me make this big because I am so blind. There we go. So that was less than helpful, wasn't it? Technology. I'm struggling too, guys. We're all trying to get here. Okay, so it really just doesn't want me to have it big, does it? Okay, well, I'm going to put my face really close so I can see. So 15, 5, five, five. And they stayed the same threshold for all of those trials, right? That is a plateau in real life. Now, if you had tested all those in between, it would have stayed the same. And it would have stayed the same for a long time probably, depending on what their actual interaural attenuation was. But let's talk about formula masking and where this becomes a little bit problematic. So maximum masking is bone conduction of the test ear, which we don't know what it's going to be, but we know it's conductive, so we have to assume it's going to be zero. So the test ear, we have an air threshold of 40, but we don't know. We just know based on otoscopy and tympanometry that it's conductive. So we might be thinking, oh, that bone score is going to be zero. That's the assumption we have to make. So bone conduction of the test ear is zero plus IA is 40, minus 5. Maximum masking is 35. And this would have just barely squeaked by. Minimum masking, according to the formula, would be test signal of 40, minus IA, which is 40, and significant non-test ear air bone gap, which is the right ear, non-test ear, we're going to assume zero. So it's zero plus the 10. So minimum masking is 10. Our non-test ear is, um, our non-test ear is sensory neural. There's no air bone gap. So it's easy. Formula masking kind of works. 
But here's like the truth of it. Formula masking is going to say, oh my God, that's maximum masking. If you look at the norms for what real interaural attenuation is, you might see values as high as 85 at 1,000. So that's what these little like rainbowy ones are, is like the top limits of interaural attenuation according to norms. So formula masking would say, this is where it, this is where the rubber meets the road. And it, and it all worked out just fine on this one. But if it didn't, the math formula is, it's still worth it to try because you might have this much room. All right, so let's see how we would mask for 2,000 hertz. We've got a threshold of 40. We need masking noise, so we turn it on. Actually, I've had it on this whole time, haven't I? Um, it's a good thing it's not a real patient. Um, so I would do, in real life, 15, and I would present, and they'd get it. Turn it up, present, and they get it. Turn it up, pause, present, and they get it. And one more, turn it up, pause, and present, and they get it. So we would hit store, and we would get another one that was 40. Only this time, again, we're here at 40. The non-testier air is also zero. So we're kind of all mishmashed here. And in real life, I would do 15, 5, 5, 5. And that threshold would stay the same the whole time. And that's where it would be here. And you could work it out. Maximum masking is bone conduction of the test deer. And since it's conductive, we have to assume it's zero. So it all works back out to zero again. And I should have made all of those blue. Blue, 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 blue. And minimum masking is test signal being 40 minus IA, which is 40. Non-test ear air bone gap, which is the right ear has no air bone gap. It's zero, so that's zero. And then plus 10, so it's 10 again. Easy peasy. It just works that way. Um, 35 to zero, maybe you think you need to mask, maybe you don't. But it's going to mask out pretty well. Um, you just, it's about what do you assume is going to happen with the other ear. So these ones, we look going to be 25 to 0. That one probably doesn't need to mask. 30 to 0, maybe negative 10, probably doesn't need to mask. 30 to negative 5, eh, maybe, maybe not. We're not sure. Um, but when in doubt, you would mask. So the other thing to think about is that 6,000 hertz and 8,000 hertz you don't do bone on, so you don't know, so you really are assuming. So I am going to undo that tracking. Um, I tend to be a little bit conservative on that when I start. So 35 dB here, I would think mm, bone could be in real life there. I would probably mask. So I would turn it on, one, two, three, present, and she gets it. Turn the masking noise up, pause, present, and she gets it. Turn the masking noise up, pause, present, and she gets it. At least one more. Pause. Present. She gets it. Hit score. And then turn the masking noise off. And when you have a mask threshold, there's, there's either people just don't bother to do or they would turn the masking noise back on and you would check it with the masking noise on. 
and either do a full threshold search or present what it's not and then what it should 100% do and if they said, said nothing and then they said yes, then it checks out. Then 500 hertz definitely needs to mask. So threshold here, masking noise, I would turn it on at the threshold of the non-test ear. One, two, three, that's the 15. Present, she gets it, turn the masking noise up five. Pause, present, and she gets it. Turn the masking noise up and pause and present and she gets it. And she gets it. So that is our plateau 15555. I would hit store and it would be good and I would turn it down. I would do 250 the same way. Thresholds there. Turn the masking noise on. 15. I would present and she gets it. And here's a little bit of a cheat. If she got it and I was sure. I would do one, two, three, and pause, and present, and she got it. Now think about it. That threshold never changed. I have an appropriate amount of masking. It all stayed the same. I would hit store. Some people would just throw 30 in. Some people would just throw 40 in. Some people would, would you know, do the formulas. Since the non-test ear is relatively normal and has no conductive components, a lot of things are going to work out just fine. So let's take a look at that one. Aha. I see what I might have done weird there. Let me sort that out. Let me move this over. And we'll do two fifty. Okay, so our threshold in the not in the test year was sixty. The non-test ear threshold was zero. We put in 15, five, 15, five, 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 and they got the same threshold the whole time. So if this, then that. If there is 15 dB of masking, the threshold is still 60. If there is 20 dB of masking, the threshold is still 60. So on and so forth. And there is your plateau. Now if we'd have continued on, it would have stayed the same for a good long while until you hit the individual specific interaural attenuation. And that's when it would have gone over. Because the plateau is wide, because the non-test ear, the non-test ear threshold has no conductive component to it. Because the bone score is over here being all easy. because the masking noise didn't have to get too loud. That air conduction score was here. Everything was very simple. For the right, for the 500 hertz, our threshold is 55. Non-test ears, air conduction threshold, which is how the masking is, is also zero. And we're looking at 15, 15, 5, 5, 5. 
and it all stayed the same. So that's threshold. So the masking noise is coming into the right ear at a maximum of 30, 30, 35, and 30. The left ear's bone scores, we have to assume they're zero. Nothing is crossing back. It all works out very nicely. Now, again, if we do this, it's going to be something like 35-ish when, the, when the, the maximum masking according to formula is going to be like 35-ish a lot of the time because if your bone is zero because the IA is 40 and we subtract 5 and that's a very conservative number. But the real interaural attenuation is not actually 40, it's often 60, 70, or 80 and you just don't know until you plateau it out. So that is the air conduction thresholds. Bone conduction thresholds. Goodness gracious, come on, there we go. Let me just cheat that way. What frequencies do we normally test bone conduction with? We test 500 hertz, 1,000 hertz, 2,000 hertz, and 4,000 hertz, unless we have like a good reason why we need 3,000 hertz. So which ear are we going to do bone conduction on first? Well, they're not symmetrical and we're assuming that the right ear is sensory neural. So we would do the right bone unmasked, unoccluded on the right ear. And we would get what? Well, it would be no better than 10 dB better. So say we got zero here, it would help if I switched to bone here, wouldn't it? We switch to bone and we test and we get zero here. And we test and we get zero here. And this is one thing also that drives me a little bonkers with the Astera. If, there's no, if it doesn't match and there's not another one, it will um, be in the middle. When you're drawing an audiogram, never put it on the threshold line. Be a little to the side of it. Okay, 2,000 hertz, what are we going to get? We might get anywhere from here to here. So let's say we get this. That is a perfectly rational thing to get. And let's say we got here. So we didn't need to mask here. We made a good call. We're still guessing on this. We don't know. We're guessing on this 3,000 hertz. We don't know but it kind of fits the overall pattern so we're probably okay if we tested it and you could if you wanted to be sure we got this we didn't need to mask so everything looks good we've got an unmasked unoccluded airline i mean bone line for the right ear what do we do next Well, you would do the left ear. Or you could have done word rec before, but my brain automatically jumped because I knew I have a big conductive component that I would probably want to um, do bone before doing word rec so I know those values. Um, so if you switch the bone oscillator over, the proper perfect book book method to do this would be to switch the bone oscillator to the left side, collect an unmasked, unoccluded threshold, and you would get something like that, and it needs to be masked. And so the book method would be to do and collect it and get whatever your scores are, and it's this, and maybe it's that, and it's that. And then go in and put the headphone on the non-test ear on the right ear so that you could start masking. But first, collect ear-specific occlusion effects. 
That is what the book says that we need to do. In real life, let me just tell you what most people are going to do. They're going to put the Bowen oscillator on the left ear. They're going to immediately put the headphone on the right ear and just assume they're going to need to mask. But there's room, right? The non-test ear has sensory neural component. You have a great big plateau. It's probably going to work out. So let's say we do it the cheater way, the lazy way. We immediately set up... Um, bone conduction and set up for masking. So we're going to delete the left bone conduction curve and start, start over. So what is, what do we expect to get with this if we have occlusion effect? Well, that kind of just depends on the anatomy and physiology. Uh, the conductive whatever's causing the conductive component might be providing its own um, occlusion effect, or it might not, you just don't know. So I put on here the occlusion effects that you're supposed to use if you're not measuring them. But let's say the values we got are the values we got. So what we would do is for bone conduction, set up for masking if we don't measure it, Using headphones, it's 20 for 500 and 10 for 1,000. So I would get a unmasked score, and we're already set up, and I would get it for there. And then I would need to mask, obviously. So it would be 10 plus occlusion effect, which is 20. And that would be our initial masking level. And we would present and they would get it. Or no, let's say we present and they didn't get it. So we turn the mask, so we turn the tone up and we present and they get it. And then five, five, five and they get it all those times then we can hit store and then we have this as our masking amount which is a very reasonable amount see 45 db goes in above the air conduction threshold because we have 10 plus occlusion effect of 20 plus 555 for the plateau for the 1,000 hertz, again, we're using headphones. We test and we get this with unmasked score. And it needs to be masked because it's greater than 10 dB from the air score because probably the right ear is responding, but we don't know. So we turn the masking noise on. 10 plus occlusion effect, which is at 1,000, is 10. We present, and she doesn't get it, so we turn the tone up. We present, and she gets it. So then plus 5 of masking, pause. We present, and she gets it. Pause, present, she gets it. And one more, and she gets it. So we hit score and that's our score there. And we just continue on in that vein, except this time we don't need any occlusion effect. So what the book says is 10 on threshold 10 plus 555. Five, five. And technically Actually, let's put it there. Say we had an unmasked score here. We turn the masking noise on. 
We did that whole 10. We don't have an occlusion effect at 2,000 hertz, 555. Technically, the book says that that would be an appropriate amount. I'm just going to tell you if other people look at that and they're used to seeing 15555, then they're going to be like, oh, that's not enough masking. So technically it's correct, but people are used to 15555. So if I was doing it, sometimes I will go ahead and try another 5 or another 10 and 15 and see if it's still there just so that I can mark it so it looks like a reasonable amount based on 20, 10, 10, or 15, 5, 5, 5. Um, because sometimes people do question that. But technically, anywhere from there is going to be fine. So we have an unmasked score, and we would get something like this. We would turn the masking noise on at the threshold, air conduction threshold of the non-test ear and 15, 5, 5, 5. And if they got it all the same, it would all work out just fine. So let's kind of look how that kind of looks on the masking plateau worksheet. The non-test ear bone was at for 500 hertz was zero. The air conduction score of the non-test ear is also zero. We would do 10 plus an occlusion effect of 20 and start here, right? And they get it, and they get it, and they get it, and they get it. That is the plateau that you would do in real life. If they got it. This particular person didn't, though, right? So we were here. At zero, we turned on the masking noise 10 plus the occlusion effect of 20. We turned on the masking noise at 30, and they did not get it. So we had to turn the masking noise up 5, and then, I mean, we had to turn the tone up 5, and then they get it, they get it, they get it. So this was a no. They didn't get it right at zero it turned up five but then from there it all stayed the same so that's how we got this masked 5 db here and a thousand hertz something similar we would turn we would the threshold the test threshold for bone was starting out at zero the non-test ear air threshold is 5 here. We use 10. We'd use 10 plus an occlusion effect of 10. So we would start masking here, right? But they didn't get it at 0. They got it at 5. And then 5, 5, Five, and that's where that 40 dB of masking that we got came from. So that's like I had you do an activity to draw the whole thing so you could get a sense of where people's actual crossover happens on the masking noise and also so you could draw the little hashes, right? Your handwriting is all better than mine. But so... So you could see where it is. But in real life, this is all you're, you're doing is this part in there to see if it stays the same.
So I hope that helps. Um, and again, if you have any questions, just ask me. And I am happy to do a session or another video or a group chat or whatever you need to help get this in your head, how masking actually works and when you need to mask.